presented by Diet Mountain Dew. Delicious. Time to start revealing the answer key for this year's NCAA tournament. Joining us now, college basketball analyst Dan Dockish, who we're playing Who You Got. All right. Up. So this guy likes upsets. I got a feeling he likes upsets here. You have that feeling? Why go chalk? He's you an go. upset dude. Well, the first one, who you got? Michigan or Tennessee? Eight-seeded Michigan Wolverines entering the tournament as one of the lower scoring teams in the country. They average just about 66 and a half points per game. More than 40% of their shots are three-pointers, despite the fact that they only make about 35% of them. Led by guard Tim Hardaway Jr., son of senior, who is averaging just under 14 points again. Then you got Tennessee, big dance, most inconsistent team in the country, one of. They started the season 7-0 with wins against Villanova and Pitt, but they did struggle to close the season. They lost 7 of 11 down the stretch. This is a heck of an intro. Still, <laughs> Electric scorer, Scotty Hobson. He averages just under 18. Dan, who you got? The team that can't shoot. I have can't Michigan. Win. Because Michigan, although they didn't score a lot of points, it's in the button down Big Ten. You open it up. Tim Hardaway Jr. and Darius Morris are terrific open court players. They can get out. They can go. They have three-point shooters around them. And make no mistake... The NCAA doesn't want Tennessee moving on. Oh, they don't no. Bruce Pearl. So they move them to Charlotte in the 8-9 game. Mm -hmm. It's where you send everybody that goes to die. <laughs> I did it with Indiana when I took over Samson's program. We went to Ra Raleigh to play in North Carolina's bracket. Wow. Well, yeah, to be honest with you, Tennessee is inconsistent, racket. kind of a mess, not playing well late. Not They're a little bit like Villanova. I like them early. I don't like them now. I'll probably agree with them on that. Michigan or Tennessee, Nation, who you got? It's actually an even matchup. Interesting. Two teams that aren't going to go very far. <laughs> Two teams that are done after this. 53. I like this next one of, because I'm a homer, Texas or Oakland. Longhorns, at one point in the season, they actually were ranked pretty high at number two. But they are a four seed out west. They faltered at the end of the season, of course, the Big 12 tournament, ugh, led by Jordan Hamilton. They are facing a team by the name of the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. They lost to the number one overall seed, Ohio State. That was back in December. They got crushed in that game. Since yeah. then, though, they've only had one loss, sandwiched between a 10-game winning streak, and they leave the Summit Conference. Learning a lot of conferences here. Who you got, guys? I've got Oakland in an upset. Tell you why. Oakland can score. I mean, really score, and Texas cannot score. Oakland has a pro. Keith Benson is an absolute pro. Reggie Hamilton averaged 23. He's a point guard that can break down pressure. The fact that Oakland has played and beaten Tennessee at Tennessee. They also played Michigan State. We talked about Ohio State. They're not intimidated. Greg Campy will switch up defenses when it gets tough. The fact that Oakland can score big time, they're going to beat Texas in a huge upset. Oh, by huge the way, upset. a lot of people believe Texas is, and I don't live for college basketball. But I can tell you this and watching him play four times in the last two weeks. It's a struggle to score every time down the floor. You watch it and you're like, wow, they got great athletes. Right. They make you struggle to score. They're great defensively. They can't put the ball in the basket. All right, Texas or Oakland calling for an upset, Dan. Texas, 88%. If that happens, uh, coming at you. 88%. Jay Billis agrees with him. Though. Look what's back. Butler and Old Dominion. They lost to Duke in the national title game, but they are back for their fifth consecutive appearance. 31-1 and over the last two seasons. They're the little team that could, as I like to say. But they are playing Old Dominion, and offense will be at a premium. They've allowed only about 58 points a game. Big reason why they rank 7th in the country. Well, they're good at rebounding, guys. Yeah. Dan, who you got? Well, Old Dominion's great at rebounding. Not good. They are great. 45% of their misses that they get. That's a phenomenal percentage. Talk to Brad Stevens today. He likes where his team's at, and here's why. They can score. Matt Howard last year, only three threes. This year, he's hit 44. He's taken off where Gordon Hayward is. Watch Chase DeGaul in this game, a kid that has started late. I like Butler in this game. Uh, because they're going to be able to shoot the ball, but also they're used to these situations. Yeah. They are absolutely used to these situations. Played at Louisville, played at Xavier, and they beat Milwaukee at Milwaukee for the conference championship. They play great defense. I mean, that, that program plays blue-collar defense. You work for everything. But like he said, unlike Texas that plays really good defense, they can actually put the ball in the hole. Plus, they had a good success last year. There's a vibe around the program that's very big. All right. The eight nine right here, Butler and Old Dominion. Who shall it be? Butler, sixty two percent. This next one, Colin. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Brigham Young or Wofford, BYU, of course. They were on quite the tear until Brandon Davies did a no no, and he's out. Jimmer Fredette all on his own for this bad boy. Does lead the nation in scoring, but will it be enough? Facing the fourteenth ranked Wofford Terriers, second time heading back to the big old tournament. 
Mike Young calling his Minnesota Mafia, which of course includes uh, a lot of seniors, a lot team. of seniors, an older team. You guys were talking about before the show. What do you think, Dan? Well, I think BYU is going down for a couple of reasons. I think they should become a one-trick pony. Every, nobody looks at the basket. Emory a little bit, but everybody else gets the ball and looks at Jimmer. And Jimmer Fredette does not play defense. San Diego State exploited it. They went every single possession at Jimmer. They didn't in the second game when they were blown out San Diego State. I like Wofford in this game. Yeah, they're experienced, and that's important. Yeah, Coach Young, Isaiah Dolman, uh, Isaiah Dolman's brother, Noah, a really good player. But more important than any of that, if Jimmer Fredette gets 52, they win. But short of that, they're not winning because they don't play defense. Awesome. Davies isn't in there to block shots anymore and clean up messes. My bracket's not complete until Jimmer faces defeat. That is my mantra for the entire tournament. I think Jimmer's overrated. That's I've been a saying this big for two months. upset you guys are saying right now. So Jimmer's going Walker down. Although I'll give BYU. BYU the win here if they lose the next game. Nation's not going to. Yeah, they're not. 95. Oh, look at that. You pull this one off. That's You're some sort of magician. <laughs> uh, Syracuse and Indiana State. Syracuse having lost to UConn in the Big East championship. They are three seed out east. No worries. They got a two three zone. They're holding teams to 60 points or fewer. Uh, well, 18 times a season. Facing Indiana State Sycamores. I'm loving this. Won five in a row. They have wins against top NBC teams. All right. Dan, if you pull another upset out, I'm going to be shocked. I know Collins chalk, but I'm an upset guy. In I this love game, it. All you hear is, well, the 2 3 zone, nobody's used to playing it. Yes, Indiana State is. Their strength is playing in the middle of zones, and that's the most difficult thing to do. It is a skill to play in the middle of the zone. They have a kid, Jake Odom. He's a freshman, redshirt from Terre Haute. Looks like Abe Lincoln. He's got that beard right here. He is a baller. He's up in big moments. Jake Kelly led Iowa in scoring two years ago. He transferred back. I'm telling you, that zone helps Indiana State. They can't play against tough man pressure. They can play against zone. Wow. Bellheim has a mixed history in yeah, this tournament. That's you right. know, with Jimmy's had unbelievable... The teams that you didn't think would win win half. He's had favorite teams come in and kind of, remember that team a few years ago, won the Big East tournament and just imploded. I'm going to go with a favorite here. I, no, I will say this. His picks are sound because, you know, a lot of the... He's got Abe Lincoln on his side. He dropped a presidential America. reference. I know. <laughs> That's never Syracuse, Indiana State, Nation. I think right now they're doing all favorites, too. 97%. Yeah. Which means that Colin and Vegas, a lot in common. Vegas, a lot of the wise guys bet the dogs this morning. Wise guys.